So today's lesson, we're going to be looking at population pyramids, uh, and in particular, how they're constructed and what they can tell us about the birth rate, death rate, infant mortality, and life expectancy of a country and how that relates to population growth, which we did last lesson. So to be successful in today's lesson, we need to be able to state whether or not a population pyramid shows a developed or developing country from uh, what we see. So it's there. Uh, we're about to describe the population structure from a population pyramid, and we're going to explain using the reasons from last lesson about higher low birth rates from what we can see from the population uh, pyramid in front of us. So your first task is to construct your own population pyramid so you gain an understanding about why it's constructed the way it is and why it shows what it shows. Don't be overly worried about this. It is just a population pyramid. Uh, it's just a bar graph tilted on its side so you get this pyramid shape and it's always split into male and, and female so that we can then drill down into how many males and how many females and what issues that might cause later on. Uh, so what you can do is make sure you, you can pause this video and then come back to it so that uh, you're not trying to watch everything and, and then come back to it and forget some. So pause it when, when you need to. So the first population pyramid you are going to draw is using this. Uh, and we've got the age groups on the left hand side and you've got then the number uh, of males and females. Uh, in each of the columns. And what I've done for you is I've started uh, this for you uh, so that you can then draw your graph. Now, if you click up on the draw tool up here, you can click draw. I would quite use the highlighter and then I would pick a color and I would uh, highlight the areas that I needed to. So this side would be yellow whatever and then this side would be green uh, take your time you would obviously use the correct data and do it a, a lot neater than me but this will allow you to draw a photo dimension pyramid so you know exactly how it's constructed and the reason for that is we are then going to use these population pyramids uh, for our next task of describing uh, scheme. So there's two data sets. There's data set one, which is this one here. There is data set two, which is this one here. Uh, again, and once we get the constructions of it, we are going to have a chat around whether or not it is developing or, or developed. So right now it might be a really good idea to, to pause this video. Uh, and spend some time constructing your own population pyramids. Once you've done that, come back and watch the rest of the video as we go through the rest of the lesson. So pause now. Right, so hopefully you have managed to uh, get through some of, of your population pyramids and you've got two very distinct looking population pyramids. What we're now going to do is we're going to spend some time describing the population structure. So the first thing we need to know is, does the graph show the population of a developed or developing country? Now, how do you know if it's developed or developing? I'm just going to jump onto this back here. The difference between a developing country and developed country is a developing country has this huge wide base at the bottom. All right. And it looks like your traditional pyramid with a wide base and a very narrow top. We've got a lot of young people and we've got very little old people. All right. So cycling over here, does the graph show a population of a developed or developing country? We need to write this that first sentence. This graph or this population pyramid shows uh, the population of a, uh, and we know this one is. A developing country. All right. So we need to describe the shape. What of the shape is? We've got a very traditional 
pyramid shape. So we would say it's wide at the bottom, it's getting narrow or narrow at the top. All right. So start at the wide and it's getting narrow towards the top. So that's the shape of it. Then we need to look at what proportion, what is the proportion of young dependents? So young dependents is anybody under the age of 16. So then we need to add up how many people of males and females that is under the age of 16. And then we would put that information in our description. Does it show a high or low birth rate? And what we want to look for is this zero to four. Now, zero to four, there is three million, just under three million females and about three million males. So there's about six million zero to four year olds. Does that show a high or low birth rate? What do you think? And then you put that in, I think, or this shows a high or low. What is the proportion of old dependents? So anybody aged over the age of 65 is an old dependent. So again, we need to add that up. Is it a high proportion? Is it a low proportion? Uh, does it show a higher low death rate? Uh, and then how does the amount of working age people compare to everybody else? And working age is between 60 and 65, as that is the most likely time that you are going to be spend your life working. All right. So I would like you now to spend some time answering these questions, these describing questions, and just underneath here, describe the population pyramid above using the structure here. And you can move over the structure as many times as you like. Once you've done that, I want you to move on to task 1B. Now, task 1B is the same, except this is a developed country, and we can notice that actually it's got a narrower base, but it's got this really fat middle bit, and then a narrower top, all right? And this is what's called a bell-shaped population pyramid, because it kind of looks like a bit like a bell, or the silhouette of a bell, all right? And what I want you to do is the same, is use the questions, and below, describe the population pyramid. Oh, apologies, folks, all right? So that is task 1A and 1B. Now, this might be a good time to pause the video and give yourself some time to complete the task before we move on to the next section. So let's look at the problems of a greying population. So in developed countries such as Scotland and the United Kingdom, uh, Japan as well faces this problem. People are living longer because of things like better healthcare, lack of disease, better kind of food availability, whatever. So what happens is the population is getting much older and now people are having less kids as the table shows us. The life expectancy in 2012 is about 80 years. Yeah. Whereas in 1900, it was only 50 years. And the children per woman in 1964 was 2.93, so almost three kids. In 2012, that's down to nearly two. Uh, so what we then need to look at is what problems will this cause of the population getting much older? So look at the task 2A. What I would like you to do is I would like you to click into this video watch this video and once you have watched it and you can watch it several times pop some notes in about what issues a country might face as their population gets older so things you might want to think about is what happens when these people retire yeah who's going to look after them what does that look like what happens if they get sick etc etc Okay, so pause the video right now. What I'd like you to do is watch the video, this other video, pause this one, click back on it and watch this one, and then from there, take notes on the problems that you would face from a greying population. Cool. Now that we've done that, eh, what we're going to do is we're going to move on to task 2B and take each of the problems above and we are going to explain how each of them is a result of a growing population. So, 
if we look below, okay, that here. more pensions. So if people are living longer, we would have to pay more pensions out uh, for them. Uh, where school would close because there is less young people who go to school, so they wouldn't need as many schools open. Teachers would be out of a job, uh, which might make some of you happy. Less tax would be paid because more people have retired. They would have to raise the retirement age and the amount of tax paid. Ooh. And this is actually something that the UK government has done, is raised the retirement age very recently. There would be jobs that not filled because there's not enough working age population. You would need more healthcare workers to look after this older generation. It would put huge amounts of pressure on the NHS, and there's obviously the less people working age. So what you need to do is take each of the problems above, explain how each of them is a result of a greying population, and you might be able to combine some. An example is elderly people are more likely to fall and require medical attention. They also need annual flu jabs and regular checkups. A large amount of medicine and prescriptions are also needed, and this puts pressure on the NHS. So that's covered pressure on the NHS and probably more health workers needed, which costs a lot of money. All right. So pause the video here, complete task 2B, and then come back and watch the rest of the video. Perfect. Now that that's done, we're going to move on to more problems of a rapidly growing population. So that is the opposite. What happens when your population is super young and it's going to grow really, really fast? Places like China and India tend to have this issue with their rapid growing population. <sighs> so what services do you think will be affected in developing countries and what sorts of problems will they have? So have a think about what would happen if your uh, population is super young and growing really, really fast. And then take some notes either at the side or underneath uh, this kind of part of the lesson so that we can refer back to it later on. So here's some of the problems, and one of the most or um, biggest problems they face is the brain drain. So basically, the brain drain is when highly skilled workers such as doctors from India and Pakistan would move to the UK and work there because their English is at a really high level. Because wages are lower in India than if you work in the UK, so it attracts people to come and work there. Now, Cuba has the same issue with doctors and engineers leaving to go down to the USA, and it's 90% for money. Sometimes it's for because a better way of life, but if the UK can pay you more money for doing the same job, you're more likely to go there. Uh, let me move myself, folks. So we the side a wee bit. Another problem, or other problems in rapid growth populations, is a rise in crime because young people become extremely bored uh, if they don't have a job, so they tend to turn to crime, overcrowding, a brain drain that we spoke about. Pressure on health services for the amount of new babies that need to be looked after, vaccinated, checkups, high unemployment because there's too many people, uh, there's too many people for the jobs available, and that leads to this rise in crime you mentioned about. Soils become infertile through over farming to try and cope with the amount of people. Oh, well, I don't know why I'm yawning so much. Uh, soil becomes infertile through over farming because the sheer amount of people that you need to feed within your country. What that means is the soil can't be used, so farms become smaller, so you've got more pressure on the farms to produce food and water. You've got this greater demand for that, so you might need to start rationing, and then we've got overcrowded schools, so money has to be found for brand new school buildings or for uh, teachers. All right. So the next task I want you to do are two quite really important tasks, and I need you to take your time and always refer back to your notes when completing these. So they're exam-style questions. All right. So this 
question is from a past paper and it's split into two. We've got A1 and A2. So A1 is describe the main differences in the population structure between the rural and urban areas shown in reference diagram Q2A, which is up here. So we've got the rural area and the urban area. And with a describe, we just need to mention what the differences are. So what are the differences in young dependents? Well, in the rural area, there's 10% of uh, the rural area is male, whereas in the urban area, it's only 7%. That is one difference. That's you describing the difference. Just say what the differences are. In the urban area, 20, 29, 25 to 29-year-olds is sitting at about 11%, whereas in rural areas, it's much lower than that. 3%. Another difference. Personally, if it's only worth three marks, I would take one difference from the young dependents, one difference from the working age, and one difference from from the the old dependents. All right? And just pick one age group and tell me what the numbers are and how it's different to the other side. All right? The next part is suggest reasons for, and this is like an explain why is it different? Why is there more young people in rural areas than there does in urban areas? Why is there more working age people in urban areas than rural areas? And this is where you have to think about what I have to think back to our population growth lesson and imagine that rural areas are much poorer and developing and urban areas are more developed. And that should give you a bit of a clue about your answers here. But look over your stuff on population growth. All right. Now, once you've completed the answer, that's great. I then want you to go on and do task 3B, which is another exam style question. All right. So this time, we've got to describe the problems which may be caused by the population changes above. So here it is in 2001, and here it is in 2021. Look what's happened to the population. It's got a lot older, 